Hello everybody, I'm OK Fixer and welcome to my garage. For your viewing pleasure, another Volkswagen. Uh, this is the uh, chassis of the red one, the 69. Um, we're going to be taking floor pans off of it. This floor pan is cooked pretty good. I managed to get all the nuts out that uh, nuts or bolts out that uh, I had to clamp onto them with vice grips and get them out. I don't know if I'm going to use them again. Probably. I'm amazed at how strong uh, that German steel is. It's, it's incredible. It doesn't. It's like it's impervious to rot. It'll rust, but it's impervious to. If it was Japanese stuff, it would just be. <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing. This cheap little car, the kind of steel they put into it, they really did a nice job. I mean, I just uh, it's it's yeah. Uh, so I took the uh, rubber gasket off, and uh, it's okay. Uh, it's over here. It looks like crap to you, but it's going to work for me again, just like I did on the other one. Um, I'm looking at uh, ball joints and and all that stuff like that and making a list of all the things I need and while I'm into this and uh, I'm not going to do like I did last time oh don't let me forget to uh, put a uh, uh, in the diddly -diddly. yeah <laughs> a bushing on the shift rod there he had go I knew it'd come out um, so I'm making a list of all the things that needs. Um, uh, one person on my page, I think it's his 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 uh, his uh, handle is Romeo or something, uh, said that the uh, housing is different uh, than from this transmission uh, than this transmission over here. It's highly possible I'm going to have a good look at this transmission. And you know it it worked, and I'm going to drain it and see what's in it. And if it's got oil in it, I'm probably going to use it again. I'm going to fix the hockey stick, and the CV where the CV's bolt. There's seals underneath there. I will put new seals on there, and um, run it again. See what happens. You know, if it doesn't slip out of gear and make a lot of noise, it's great. If it does, I've got that one, so we'll be okay. Uh, we can probably get it all together and jack it up and you know run it and see if it goes through all four gears and that kind of stuff and we can also test our engine uh, before we put it the body on it and that way I'm not taking it back out again like I did this one let's let's do it one time this time instead of doing it three times so yeah um, this floor pan isn't too bad but it's got some buckled portions to it and when you push down on them they're just it's just very thin and I'm here man I'm here so I'm just gonna do another one you know why not I know it's not the original one yeah what are you gonna do so uh, some little things I've noticed uh, this tube is gone on the other side it's rotted of course I'm gonna need another cable it's little ancillary things like that that you gotta think about put on your list. Alright, I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm just going to start whacking with my Sawzall and I'm going to get that cut all out of there and then once I get that cut out of there I'll have a small little strip of metal I can I can bop off of there with a, with an air chisel which ought to be uh, nice and noisy for the neighbors. I ought to really like that. So, uh, Okay, let's uh, Let's get whacking at this, and I'll, I'll show you my progress. I won't bore you with the actual, yeah. Well, I used a sawzall to cut those off. But I'm going to take uh, the air chisel and get all the rest of that, and I'll get it ready. Uh, there's a problem, though. The metal parts I ordered, <laughs> they, they wrote me back, you know, of course course after they took my money and said and said <clears throat> oh it might be three weeks before you get your parts because of the COVID-19 you know <laughs> so uh, yeah there you go so and yeah, the best I can do so 
what I'll do is I'll I'll cut those pieces off with the uh, the air chisel and get it all ready for it. And then I'll start taking stuff apart and making lists and you know we we'll start with the front and you know, we have a look at the brakes and see what's see the wheel cylinders are leaking if the brake shoes are any good you know that kind of stuff and, and we'll just go right down the line make a list and I might order some stuff from Rock Auto and or wherever and start doing some work on uh, the chassis other than the other than the pan uh, one thing I can do is I can take that engine out transmission out and uh, probably what I'll be doing because I don't have any parts you know so that's probably what's going to be next well okay um so I've got this trimmed back um, and I'll have to take and take that all off in there with my air uh, chisel uh, but I don't feel like the compressor screaming in my ear and all that noise and stuff like that so I don't have those pans and that's going to be two weeks before I get them so and I don't have any parts so I'm gonna pull this engine and pull the transmission out and we'll have a look at why it's not shifting so engine the uh, one drive line yeah and we'll pull this engine or pull this transmission out and we'll have a look at what I think is wrong with it and we'll drain the oil in the transmission and see what's in it so let's uh, get busy this is just me but I like to put a piece of plywood up there actually I would uh, build I think uh, one of these days uh, a dedicated piece that I can just slide up underneath there and it's perfect uh, so because the the heat box is either lower or higher than the center of the oil little gizmo so but I like a little something just something so the floor jack isn't exactly right on the oil uh, oil cover so to each his own make sure the plywoods back this way so it's not on the transmission that way you you can actually separate them I re um, removed my wires from my uh, backup lights on my transmission uh, pulled the gas hose off, plugged it with a pencil, plugged the front one with a pencil too. Um, the Bowden cable for the throttle cable is right there. The uh, heat box cables, uh, this one broke off so I just cut the other one off. I plan on replacing them anyways along with the uh, defroster cable. Um, so I think we're ready to unbolt and uh, you have some 17s right here one here one here this uh, your starter bolt if you've never had one of these out before yeah there you go uh, the starter bolt will uh, will come out the whole thing uh, little things like this were lost on my 67 odd this has got a remanufacture tag on the uh, starter so the starter's been remanned um, I don't think this engine's ever been out um, there's so many things that make me think it's never been out one thing is the absence of any 10 millimeter six point excuse me 10 millimeter head six point um, bolts um, you know that are six the six millimeter thread they're all the cheese head bolts okay and even competent mechanics lose them and and find uh, you know oh I lost one uh, you know uh, you know put it find another cheese head or order one nah we'll just put a we we'll just put a regular bolt in there now this has been replaced so that's how you get the belt off but these other ones I don't know about and the amount of spooge on these bolts, let's see if I can find it. Here's the bolt or the, the nut down here. And and uh, there's so much I had to cut so much spooge out of it. I don't think this engine's ever been out. 
It'll be interesting to look at the clutch to see if it's the original clutch. Here's another thing I've seen. See the big VW logo on the exhaust? Yeah, never been replaced. I think this car's probably got about 110, 120,000 miles on it. This spotometer broke. And then, you know, about 90 something thousand miles, and they put a few more miles on it. See, there's a tag right there. They put another 10 or 20 probably on it after the speedometer broke. But I don't think this engine's ever been out before. And it had to have had regular oil changes because of how clean the valve or the valve, or the cylinder heads were. All right, let's take those nuts off. There she goes. I know you're going to want to jam a Torx in there or a six point, but buy yourself a genuine 12 point socket. They're not much and they sure help you. It's been a part. See all that scarring? Like something's been dancing around in there. You see it? Sweet. Train. We're going to take these plugs out and see what's in there. There's two of them. There's one there, one right here in the back, or in the front rather, and one in the rear. So we'll see if there's anything in here at all. It would be good if there was something in here. That's not too bad. There is quite a load of crap on the plug. But, oh yeah, man, there's lots of, lots of fluid in this, good. Probably wouldn't shift so they filled it with fluid. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Let's do this one next. Okay, that'll be the rear. Let's see if I can get my fingers back here. Yeah, I don't bend that way anymore. Let's see. Oh, that's nice all over the floor. That's what I always wanted is 90 weight on the floor. Okay, and this one's the rear. So it's good we have we have some fluid in there. That's excellent. Uh, let's have a look at those plugs and see if there's any chunks in there. Awesome, I bet you had two quarts in it, if not more. Here's the uh, magnetic plugs. Yeah, a lot of fine stuff, but I don't see anything really bad. Yeah, I'll go through these, and if I find anything interesting, I'll show you. Other than that, we'll take these, take transmission off, and have a look at the uh, nose cone in the broken hockey stick. Just fell off. That's funny.
Ooh, careful. Careful, you might break it. Just take this uh, nose cone off. Odds bodkins, these are 11. That's weird. 11 millimeter. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, seven total. So let's take that off and this thing should come off of there. And then we'll look at the uh, hockey stick and see if it's broken or one of those shafts is broken. Well, the stick of hockey is not broken. See? So we'll have to we'll have to examine this and see what's wrong with it. Don't know. Might be nothing wrong with it. Ha. Okay. Um Here are your three little shift dogs and the hockey stick goes in here like so. Okay. The way I have this sitting it's going to go in there this way and you're going to go uh, uh, uh. so this is going to be your reverse. This should be your reverse right here. And so you can take it give it a little give it a little nudge and she does come up and I think it only has one detent yeah that's it that's reverse right there and it's got a little stop here it only goes down once and it, it'll come in value with all the rest of these uh, as these are in neutral okay so this is going to be your first and second and this center one is your third and fourth maybe first and second third and fourth okay so uh, they, they'll have two detents one down and then if you come back up again that's neutral and then if you come back up one more time that's another gear right there that's another gear uh, and then so there's that one and I'll put it back down in neutral because you got to go back into neutral because that's where the other ones will be laying while you shift the other one so all the other gears have to be in neutral before they'll move and this one moves up fine like that and we'll put it back down in neutral but it doesn't want to go down it hangs up <clears throat> and uh, let's tap that a little bit and see what happens there she goes down and that shouldn't be like that it should it should easily it should easily come up or, or should easily go down and what we're going to do it, it comes up really easy but it doesn't want to go down all the rest of them work rather slick and, and smooth and this one's got a hang up on it so let's take the nose cone off that other uh, other transmission and we'll have a look at it and we'll see uh, we'll see how easily they work but I know from experience that these are supposed to uh, snick right in place very easily. This one here is not. And uh, it's probably got a bad gear or something's broken inside the transmission. Uh, maybe a, a spline or something or some sort of pin holding a gear has come, is broken. Or something like that and it's not allows it, allowing it to engage or if it does engage it's stuck. So, uh, you might be pulling the shaft, but the gear might be stuck there, if that makes sense to you. So, let's have a look at this other transmission. 
and see where we're going to go. But I think this one is toast. We have the other transmission nose cone off and um, I noticed this in the uh, in in the mix and what this is is uh, it's what's left of the bushing uh, that that goes in here that's why that hockey stick was so sloppy okay so we'll have a look at that but uh, okay uh, so they're all in neutral or, or there it's in the neutral position so this is uh, a forward gear I think it's uh, third or fourth probably when I push it down it will be third okay and it goes down reasonably well lift it up and now now we're gonna lift it up one more and reasonably well tap it back down into neutral now we'll lift first or second I don't know which is which uh, that lifted up really well now uh, this one didn't want to go down in the other transmission. It goes down quite well in this one. Uh, snicks into place. Okay. And then our reverse. Our reverse goes, is right there. Seems to work pretty good. Let's try that one more time here. We're just going to, we're not really putting any pressure on them. We're just kind of giving them a little. Not anything more than the, than the shifter would do. Okay, okay. I, I think that this transmission shifts good. I think this is a reasonable shifter. Okay, this is the hockey stick that came out of that right there. Okay, well, let's look at the hockey sticks between transmissions and see if there's any difference. Okay. And apparently, there is none. There isn't any difference in length or configuration. Uh, this one is not any longer, not really. It might be, oh, you know, it might be a sixteenth of an inch longer, I think, but. I think it's just extra metal material because the holes for the screw to go in for your shifter rod are the same. I think they're the same. This one's quite corroded, so I probably use this one. They come out of the older transmission. And let's have a look at nose cones. Um, Romeo uh, on my channel, he said the nose cones are different. So we'll have a look see. Well, uh, let's see here. That's the old one, and that is the new one. Let's see here. Uh, this one here is missing the bushing and and the seal and and the seal. I don't know if you can see that that bushing there. So that's there. Nose cones look to be the same. However, there is an addition, a another, another uh, some sort of detent that detects, and I don't know what that's for. Uh, I'd have to think about it and study it a little bit. I'll find out for you later. But that's your; those are your reverse lights. So I think. We're going to use the original nose cone because it's got a good. If you look in this one, it's 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 just that it's huge, and this one here still has the bushing in it, so the bushing hasn't been pushed out of place. So we we'll use this nose cone, and we'll use this hockey stick on the transmission I got. Let's see if it didn't go in there. Let's see if everything fits. Yes. We'll have to clean this all up and seal it. Uh, but I think it'll I think it'll be fine once we get it bolted down. We, there's no slop there, not like the other one, because the bushing's there. And we're back with our original configuration of just 
a um, uh, backup lights. I don't know what this other switch is for. I'll have to find out. Uh, indeed, this is the newer transmission. So this has uh, the high cut fourth gear, which is a finer cut fourth gear. It's not any faster or stepped up or anything. It just has a higher cut and therefore it makes less noise. Uh, provided it's good, <laughs> provided it's a good transmission. This transmission here, I'm afraid it, it's got something wrong with it inside. It's stuck. Uh, maybe one day I'll take it apart. Uh, if it's completely trash, you know, I can use that for a, uh, a starter. You know, I can just bolt an engine up to it and uh, it'll start. So, yeah. Okay, um, let's get this cleaned up and we'll seal it clean up the uh, body of the car. Ah, that's all the farther I can go because I've, I'm have i going to buy seals for this and put new seals here and here as well. Give it a chance. Okay, very good. I'm making an, an executive decision on this uh, and I'm not going to put uh, seals in there. And I'll tell you why. Neither am I going to put a seal in that, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't even know if it works. The transmission runs, you know, goes through the gears and stuff. I know it shifts, but does it slip out of gear? Well, I need another transmission. Well, I ended up having to take both of these apart and using one part and another, one part and another. I don't know. I'm just going to button that one up, clean it up, uh, put a little sealant on the uh, on the top of that cone. And bolt it down, clean it all up, make sure it has uh, fluid in it, and uh, change the uh, the mounts. Use the best mount because it doesn't make any sense uh, to put a lot of money into something that you don't know that's going to work. So I'm not going to put seals in it. Besides, it doesn't look like they're weeping out of that, and it's full of full of fluid. Of course, it's weeping out all over the place because I took the nose cone off, but it doesn't doesn't look like it's coming out of there. This transmission did not have a gasket on it and had some silicone on it. So that, where'd it go? This nose cone has been off before and this, if you notice, goes right on that shaft. So if you move the shaft at all, it it senses it, I think. Maybe this is for the auto stick. Maybe this is an auto stick nose cone. Got a number there. I'll, I'll have to check it out. But anyways, okay. We pulled the gasket off of that one. And um, cleaned it up. And we're going to run a little bit of that on there. Very thin. The gasket a little more on a on the cone and make sure that you put your hockey stick in there because ha, you put it together without that you're going to be angry. I'm uh, tightening this in kind of a cross fashion and I'm putting about as much torque as you'd want to put on a fastener that size. You know, I'm not cranking it down or anything crazy. And there's not 40 pounds on it or anything like that. And if you notice, this little hole right here, see the little hole? That's a vent hole. It's kind of neat. It was plugged up, so I unplugged it. And uh, it kind of skates itself around there in the in the... It's it's quite quite ingenious if you if you looked at it. So let's see if I can find it from the other one. Yeah, there's the same vent hole. If you look at it, kind of kind of got a little. So if, if the oil starts splashing around or something, some kind of violent, it's not going to. Uh, but if you submerge the vehicle, it would start taking on water. Interesting. Okay, tighten that up and. Uh, We'll have a look at our uh, motor mounts back here and down there as well in a minute. This is maybe what Romeo was talking about. 
uh, whereas this nose cone has a three bolt attachment and a different amount uh, this nose cone has a two bolt and a different mount so that's one of the reasons why you have to probably the reason why you have to replace that nose cone is because of the transmission mount itself so that is yeah there you go I'm gonna use this mount uh, it's it's old uh, but it's not separated it's not cracked too bad and I think it'll still work just fine okay what a giant goat screw uh, these uh, nuts and bolts are standard they're not metric uh, and these are made in the USA uh, blister pack MP or something crazy uh, uh, dune buggy or sand rail uh, motor mounts uh, and what that means is they're big thick motor mounts and yeah they they really they really uh, cushion the transmission in the engine but uh, they're too high and, and uh, what they'll do is when you put your engine in the your exhaust tips will will touch the the bottom of your yeah like that down there there won't be any there won't be any space the the engine will be too high and the exhaust tips will rub on your body <laughs> then you got to take it all back apart again and put stock ones on there so it's it this is one of those Volkswagen things where 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 you know you put a different screw in the hole and now your transmission won't shift or something like that yeah so if I'm gonna buy mounts I'm gonna buy the ones in the front uh, the one in the front and the one in the back as well the one in the front's only five bucks so why not but why not buy another one I'm also going to chase these uh, where the CV mounts with a uh, six by one two five tap I think I think that's what that is no that's that is eight millimeter eight by one two five so I will chase those so I won't be playing hell trying to get my screws in there uh, when I go to mount the uh, CV shafts so uh, I'm going to take those off, set this transmission aside because there isn't anything more I can do to it. I can do a bunch of cleaning and stuff and then um, it's uh, order parts and uh, that's about pretty much all I can do. Um, so, you know, uh, that's all I can do for right now. Uh, okay, well, uh, we will uh, finish this up tomorrow or something uh, and uh, I'll give you a plan of what I'm going to do and what I've ordered. All right. Uh, okay, I'm in the orange Bentley book and um, F4 is a backup light switch and you know that's in the transmission. Uh, F15 is a transmission switch for safety belt warning system. So, wonder how that works. So I, I don't know if it's a you have to have it in neutral or I don't know. I don't know. Twenty-eight. Here's twenty-eight. F fifteen, and it's going up to the K nineteen. Would be the safety belt warning system light why is it just a light I don't know I don't I don't it's a uh, safety feature that's what that other switch is for in the transmission it's not uh, for an automatic transmission the automatic transmission has uh, Uh, that I mean, as soon as you grab a hold of the the shift, it it senses it and draws the clutch in for the automatic transmission. It's not it's not connected to the shift to the shift rod into the transmission cone or anything. So that's got to be what that's for. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got my mask kind of sweeped up and uh, things tucked away um, I ordered a load of parts uh, uh, for this <laughs> and and for that uh, 
I, I found I found a really nice low mile engine and transmission so it's going to go in that and I'm going to drive that for another five years or ten years <laughs> much to my wife's chagrin <laughs> that's another story okay um, I uh, got things cleaned up out here and uh, I've got our transmissions tucked up underneath there oh no, we're going to put two transmissions in it and two engines and and uh, one engine is going to two throttles and as you as you throttle one engine it'll turn the car to the right or the left <laughs> no we're not going to do that okay uh so we have two transmissions uh this one uh, seems to shift better uh, it, it'll need everything, mounts and such like that. So, I, I, like I said, I ordered those parts, and the only thing I can really do now is kind of degrease everything. Um, I'm sorry I'm hopscotching around so much here. Uh, when you have a project like this, it all hits you in the face, and, uh, and you don't know what to work on first. And so I'm doing, I'm doing what I have oh, parts for, or what I can do you know but anyways I ordered a lot of parts and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the back here and we'll mount our transmission and then we'll have a look at our uh, our we'll replace our flex lines and, and our brake shoes our wheel cylinders and we'll have a look at those bearings inside there also I think I think you can grease them I think you can clean them up and grease them I can't remember uh, been a while since I had one of these uh, We'll get that all buttoned up and then we'll be able to push it out into the backyard so we can work on that. And, oh, and that, that ought to take 30 minutes or something like that. I have an engine in that in a minute. <laughs> ah, ah, the things I do. Yes. So um, I'm going to cut this one and get it on the interwebs. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry it's... It wasn't, a, it wasn't a lot, it was just kind of piecemeal, this and that and the other. No really significant, uh, well, there was some significant advance. Everything is an advance. And like I said, when you get into the situation like this, and, and work's hitting you in the face, and family's hitting you over here, and then you got a car to fix over here, and then you got yard work and, and all that other stuff, man, it's really difficult to do this. Uh, get any time at all on it so you got to do what you can do and it's it's kind of daunting but it's it's fun and uh I, I really enjoy working on cars i just do i've got a bone for it i just i like turning wrenches well i hope you guys like this and um i'll see you on the next one we'll get uh we'll get those wheels apart and the rear and uh, have a look at the brakes and wheel cylinders and whatnot like that oh one other thing i wanted to say uh i was looking for a master cylinder and uh, the master cylinder for this um, is not really available. Um, so I'm going to see if this uh, is this master. Is there a master cylinder that fits in the hole? Yeah. Do the lines fit up to it? Yeah. But is it the correct one? That's a whole different story. So I think I'm going to stick with this one. We'll power it up and uh, and pressure it up and see if anything leaks or gives or blows or whatever like that. And she might be okay because she had fluid in it, so it wasn't wasn't dried, it wasn't dried up. But uh, the one the ones I can find are for all for super beetles. <laughs> so I, I haven't looked very very hard, um, but uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, Wolfsburg doesn't have them, so you know I mean, they're out. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna get this on the interwebs, and uh, uh, I'll see you guys later, and gals, and take care. All right, bye.